Hey, what's up guys? Arava here and welcome back to another episode of my F122 My Team Career Mode. This is episode number 112 today for the Italian Grand Prix in Season 7. It's been a little while since the last round. Of course, F123 Fever uh, took over in the last week. But we're back now to continue and pick up from where we left things in this My Team series in Season 7 after a crucial Belgium Grand Prix that saw the championship leader, the most consistent man this season, Lando Norris in the Audi, suffer an engine failure. And at the same time, we saw Lewis Hamilton climb to some familiar lofty height by taking his second victory of the season. And quite surprisingly, he's become the first repeat winner of the entire series. Hamilton had, after how his season began, that is quite some achievement, to be honest. And it shows our car is going from strength to strength in these recent races but there are difficult but there are more difficult ones coming up so we need to make the most of it now where the mighty team car works one of these races in the middle of the european portion of the season because there will be other races where the audis come back strong vettel ren sport heck the williams Haas, they've been there as well and more recently even some of the other midfield teams are creeping up and giving a lot of us a bit of a headache things are super close in the drivers champion as well as the constructors so all of us are going to have to try and keep ourselves at the top of our game for our respective teams but we come to a very wet and wild Monza for the first of our two back-to-back -back Italian Grand Prix of course from Monza to Imola but first up we've got to get through and navigate a very difficult Saturday you know it's been a fair few days that I've not played F122 and to be honest coming back to a full wet uh, session at Monza is not the easiest thing to come back to but surprisingly the car felt pretty good maybe because I have set the car up for this session because there is also some rain forecast for Sunday's race not completely so it will start in the dry I think the, the Grand Prix but there will be some rain at some point on Sunday so I'm betting and compromising my setup to help us out in qualifying to help us out in that wet weather period and that might mean that at the start of the race, when it is dry, we may face some difficulties in a straight line because we've upped the wings to a lot higher than I would you normally do at Monza just to give us a little bit better uh, grip in the corners. You can't really see the fruits of that labour at the moment, I'll admit, in Q1 as we're finishing up in P14 and Hamilton P8. But nevertheless, as we go through, my confidence is building in these conditions. But uh, at the moment, we've just scraped by just getting through to the next session that's all that matters and by q2 the rain's letting up and it's time for intermediates which does make things slightly easier or harder depending on how you want to say it sometimes the intermediates can actually feel a lot worse than the full wet conditions on this game but no for sure i think i was a lot more confident of trying to get some lap time out of this car around this circuit on the green wall intermediate tires at the moment we haven't gone out yet because the session started full wet i waited to the end of this session just to pump in one lap that was going to get us through into Q3 and we are through top of the pile just ahead of surprise surprise Lando Norris the championship leader ever present there Hamilton makes it through thankfully but both Vettel Ren Sports are there one Andretti of Logan Sargent the rookie American this season into the top 10 shootout his more experienced teammate Fernando Alonso knocked out again Sargent is showing this driver transfer change mid-season where Sonoda left Andretti for Audi, Alonso in, Sargent's not taking it sitting down, and Carlos Sainz has done himself some glory by being the Mercedes into the top 10 and Russell out of it. So, all the different transfers either working out or not so much. We saw a bit of that at Belgium, but we now come into Q3, and you can clearly see by the bottom of the screen, not ideal, a slight cooling system issue. So, we're sat in the garage for a couple of minutes, but it's going to be no bother because, again, after Q2, the way that 
that lap went. I just had so much supreme confidence that because I put these wings up a good, I think it was 10-10 wings, which is pretty high because, you know, technically you can run 0-0 wings and completely get away with it and be pretty good at Monza. So the fact I've gone 10-10 is giving us so much more downforce in the corners, which is giving us a really good advantage every single time we're in the break zone and coming out of one as well. In a straight line, though, I, I am fearing a little bit about how the race will go uh, in race conditions. We've seen, even last episode, if you remember, how quick some of those cars were down the Kemmel straight, even when I was deploying battery and a DRS myself. So this is a gamble, I will admit. I really need to, uh, there to be a big enough rain period in tomorrow's race for it to be worthwhile. Otherwise, we are just going to be a sitting duck in tomorrow's Grand Prix. But for now, all the glory may be coming towards us because I'm feeling very confident about this lap. The pace is good. The car doesn't feel twitchy at all. And we go quickest of all. And by the end of this session, that's all we needed. We only needed one lap and we have got pole position considerably ahead of our teammate Lewis Hamilton who won last time out but the big name isn't me on pole it's Logan Sargent the American how do you how's he done this and the Andretti he's got a second row for Andretti Honda insane stuff ahead of Nico Hulkenberg Norris will be furious with his performance down in P9 in the Audi don't know what happened to their pace clearly the Audi maybe not so great in the wet compared to their dry pace uh, you know, behind Hamilton and both Vettel Rensport cars and indeed his old teammate Carlos Sainz in the Mercedes. So some big stories and drama for former teammates and a big underdog story for the rookie Logan Sargent on the second row. But for us, it's pole position. But much like Leclerc in real life, is it going to be happy days on Saturday and then misery on Sunday? I guess we're going to find out if our gamble works out. Let's go to the race. We're back in Italy once again for another round of the Formula One World Championship. And what a great race is in store for us today, here at the oldest circuit on the calendar, which hosted its first race all the way back in 1922. We're 12 miles northeast of Milan for today's Grand Prix at a Monza circuit where we can expect top speeds of around 215 miles per hour. 11 corners on this 3.6 mile track, with seven of those coming in the form of chicanes. And with a good slipstream and DRS open, there should be plenty of opportunity for some passing here today. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. It's the owner driver then in pole position, and it's Charles Leclerc in P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Sargent, Hulkenberg, Carlos Sainz, and Drogovic, Mick Schumacher, Hamilton, Norris, and Liam Lawson, Magnussen, Ricardo, Yuki Tsunoda, and Russell. Fernando Alonso, Oscar Piastri, Max Verstappen, and Robert Schwartzman, Gasly, Albon, Perez, and Theo Porcher. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Anthony Davidson, thanks for joining me once again for the Grand Prix. Now, I want to ask you about Lewis Hamilton. That was a great win in the last race, but can they keep that momentum going into this weekend? There are never any guarantees in this business, but certainly the performance last time out would have boosted their confidence coming into this one. So it's bone dry right now around Monza. It is uh, really quite sunny around the Italian GP. So at the start, it really is going to be just myself versus everyone else in terms of the way we've gone with this setup. But I'm hoping these clear skies become doom and gloom soon enough through this Grand Prix and then we'll have the advantage. We've decided to start on the medium tyre because that rain is coming later in the race. So my plan is going to be trying to go all the way on the mediums to the intermediates. Leclerc on the front row with me also thinking the same thing maybe. The rest of them, a load of them on the soft tyre. So they're going to have to make another pit stop before that rain comes. Well, I say if, you know, the forecast on this game is never entirely accurate. 
so the rain well could come early enough for them to also switch over. I hope not, because that gives myself the advantage, but also maybe Leclerc, and we've seen many, many times before in this season so far, for whatever reason, even though we've never really had that many altercations with Leclerc in the past, here in Season 7, Leclerc's AI seems to have some sort of bone to pick with me in terms of getting into incidents with myself, and we're on the same row, on the front row, and a long run down to Turn 1, so you just never know what's going to happen. Let's see if we can fend him out and the rest of those soft tyre runners off long enough to then pay out at the wet period. So here we go then, the big gamble at Monza, the first of our two Italian Grand Prix is underway, lights out, and away we go in front of the Italian fans, and it's a great getaway for us, it's an even better one for Logan Sargent, the American rookie in the Andretti, try to go around the outside of us, we defend turn one, and instead he's left to fight with Leclerc, we are amazing in first place. Leclerc gets the better exit and gets back up into P2, but Sargent is sticking around in third place with Hulkenberg P4. Carlos Sainz up to P5 then in the lead Mercedes car. We didn't get the best entry or exit though through that left and right hander. Leclerc's all over us. He's going for the dive bomb. He's made contact with us and Leclerc pushes us off circuit. We're on the gravel, on the grass. There's a car out now behind us and the chaos that has ensued behind my rear wing and that is going to call out an early safety car and just like that what did I talk about Leclerc sticks his nose in and causes chaos and all of a sudden under the safety car we're in P6 rather than P1 disaster on lap one and all from this very aggressive dive bomb for Leclerc taps us and we're going so quickly through you know that right hand you take so much momentum on that we just go into the gravel and the grass and Logan Sargent in the Andretti undercuts both both of us to go into P1 as Sainz collects his own front right tyre on the back end of Hülkenberg and is out of this Grand Prix. But yeah, the American rookie leads the Italian Grand Prix ahead of Leclerc. And uh, after that, we're here looking at the back of Mick Schumacher's rear wing and looking to try and make amends. Verstappen on cue of the safety car coming in is out of this Grand Prix, adding to the misery that has been the Ferrari season for him in season seven as we're green flag and we're going again down to turn one. It's going to be an important fight. Some cars ahead of us side by side. We're going to take it nice and easy, but we are going to roll the car through and get Mick Schumacher, catch him napping slightly, but then we have a little bit of a snag. I think the curb on our rear tyre did not help us there. And then now all of a sudden, we're now down two positions. Hamilton and Schumacher have swallowed us up. And we're down two rather than gaining one. And we're now down in P7, looking at our teammate making the moves on lap four. As he goes through on the inside of Ascari, gets Schumacher. He's going to slow him up so much that we actually go right around the outside of the German and get up into P6. So maybe this is the answer to our problems today. We need to maybe work with Hamilton, use him as a horse to my carriage, because he's going to have a much quicker straight line speed than me with higher downforce that, you know, the setup we went with. So let's use Hamilton to our advantage, use him as a teammate, work together, and we'll also help him out by staying out of his way as he helps us out in this part of the race. But at the moment behind, Schumacher three wide with Norris and Piastri. Three abreast into turn one. This isn't going to end well. Schumacher breaks the latest, gets through, remains in P7 for now. But Lando Norris is right there. Schumacher and Norris, they've been fighting for positions for the championship lead earlier in the season. And now they're giving their all on the circuit at Monza here for P7 on the road. For me, I'm just trying to stay within one second of Hamilton to get that DRS off him. As you can see, there's a lot of fighting going on at the front. Dragovic carving his way through the traffic. He's been quite quiet this entire race, but now all of a sudden he's up into P2 and now he has the first shot at going after Logan Sargent, who's been very unbothered up till now. Leclerc really hasn't had a good go at him, but now Dragovic may be able to do what he could not and overtake the American in the American car. Dragovic through into P1. Easy does it on the inside at turn one to the outside for the next left-hander. Dragovic leads the way. Sargent down to P2. Still amazing though for him at the moment. He's actually keeping Leclerc at bay. Meanwhile, Hamilton is just dispatched of Hulkenberg, but he loses the back end. 
end and we overtake both of them on the inside of Parabolica. Uh, Hamilton did the hard work versus Hulkenberg and now look at that speed. I'm deploying battery DRS and he was still gaining on me and so because of that in the middle of the straight I just had a little thought you know what let's try this again. If we can do this again to Sergeant up the road and then Leclerc all of a sudden we're in P2 and 3 and then we can maybe overtake him for good. So very much as I planned, basically deja vu, Hamilton on the inside, both of them twitching on the rear end, I guess those soft tyres are starting to wear out on lap 8 then and it really is deja vu because we get both of them again and then Hamilton is going to out drag us and very cleanly out drag us there actually I mean that is the difference with the wing we are running to Lewis in the same car, so he's up into P3 we'll settle back down for P4 but it's fine, if he can get as close to Leclerc, I'll be happy and that that's what we're doing because we are sticking within one second of Lewis and he is there with Leclerc. But those twitches are getting bigger and a bit too big for Hamilton. He comes in the tyre wear clearly a bit too much for him now on lap 10. So him and all the other soft tyre runners, they'll be doing the same soon enough. Pitting, even the race leader, Felipe Dragovic. He may have the lead right now by a couple of seconds, but he's going to have to pit. And myself and Leclerc on mediums will not have to and will be hoping the rain comes sooner rather than later but right now I have a bone to pick with Leclerc and we're looking to pass him at Iscari but unlike him we do not make any contact with him I was uh, a little bit tempted to get some payback but we're gonna rise above it and to be fair Leclerc will come back knocking again just that pace is too much for us with battery all the way down he's still got us but we're gonna come back at him through the middle of Parabolica and we're gonna get up into P2 once more but it's gonna be the same exact story down this straight now despite Leclerc being squeezed out there and gone wide he just comes back through I've even got DRS open and he's still actually done very well to still be there on our inside we've squeezed him though very hard to the right to try and tighten up his race line and into turn one we take P1 because Dragovic on that same lap hit in off those soft tyres and thankfully for me I didn't think I'd be saying this but Lando Norris comes to, to my aid and helps me out in this race because the Audi now is having a go at the Williams car. These two side by side with DRS into turn one, but they're going to not give up the fight with each other for P2. And that's going to allow me just to quietly slip out of DRS eventually on the exit of turn one. You know, in that one corner complex alone, they lost 510. So beautiful stuff seeing them behind me fighting this vigorously. Norris getting squeezed out, having to go to the outside. Side. Can the Audi do it? Yes, he can. Showing that in the dry, at least, the Audi still does have that supreme pace. He's recovered from P9 on the grid to P2 right now. He's also on the mediums, by the way, Lando Norris. So both of them in good stead. But both of them come in. Lap 13. Oh, what's this? Oh, they've had a mare. That is a mistake from them. And that is a huge bit of an advantage for me. Norris and Leclerc, they both come. I was, I was certain they were going to stick it out with me. I really thought they would. Why else would you choose the medium tyres? I guess they're now going to go to hard tyres, I guess, because they're so worried about their tyre wear, I suppose. I don't know, but they both pit. Magnussen and Lawson stay out, but here comes Lewis Hamilton trying to get up into P4 versus Dragovic. So Hamilton's done really well in this pit stop window and this next phase of the Grand Prix to bridge that gap that was there to Dragovic on this medium tyre, followed by Hulkenberg, Sargent. So the Haas has has got ahead of the Andretti, but Sargent still flying high ahead of Schumacher, who is battling Leclerc. So Leclerc and Norris have come out in P9 and 10, way behind where they actually were before the first round of pit stop. So, you know, if you were going to go longer on mediums, you have to make it count. They've not done that. They've gone hardly much longer, and they've gone onto hard tyres. So, a very odd situation for Leclerc and Norris. Meanwhile, Hamilton trying to finish off the job that he couldn't do at turn one and a fantastic move from the eight-time world champion to get up into P4 versus the Brazilian that the Vettel Ren Sport car
Oh, is going to come back at him. And I suspect they might be swapping positions quite a few times. They look pretty damn equalised in terms of pace. Hamilton on the inside. Dragovic locks up. The Brazilian makes an error. His brakes have gone into Parabolica. And Dragovic is now firmly down in P5. And Hamilton can pull away in clean air. And as Magnussen and Lawson come in, it becomes a 1-2 for AAR. Myself in P1. Hamilton, P2. Dragovic will remain in third. Hulkenberg, fourth. Schumacher climbs up to P5. Obviously, at some point, has overtaken Logan Sargent. But we've now cut later on into the Grand Prix. Lap 19, a couple of laps later. And you can see the situation here. We've got a lot of tyre wear now. We've taken these mediums a fair few laps longer than we really should have done, even if we were going to come in for a set of dry tyres. But now, this is the moment we've been waiting for. As I started to ask about the weather, because it was getting overcast, but I was getting worried the rain was going to come soon enough. I thought my tyres would wear out and maybe get a puncture before the rain started to fall. But look at the chassis, look at the halo, and now look at the droplets of rain on the screen. This is perfect timing, just as that rear left tyre of mine is getting towards 80%, which is puncture territory, we are going to be in a position to come in for the intermediates, I suspect, by the next lap as the rain starts to settle down as we watch Drogovic catch and overtake Lewis Hamilton to get up into P2. It's no longer a 1-2, unfortunately, and that is because I actually got told on the radio in between the laps you saw Hamilton has some sort of mechanical issue. So one of those temporary issues that slows down the AI. So Hamilton is limping around for the rest of this Grand Prix as we come in now on lap 20. Oh my god, that le rear left tyre, it's dead. It is done. If I went like a lap or two more, I really would have been very concerned about a puncher. So my prayers have been answered here. The rain has come at the perfect time for me, just as I was losing hope in there being enough rain to actually pit onto intermediates. Because it was overcast from about lap 16 to where we cut back onto lap 19 to 20. But it just didn't look like it was going to start to rain. I kept asking a weather report. Engineer kept saying, it's coming eventually. It's coming eventually. A couple more minutes, a couple more laps. And it just didn't feel like it was coming. But eventually, my, it, it has, thankfully. And this is going to save our bacon. And this gamble that began, remember, at the start of Park Fermi on Saturday has paid off for us. Mistakes in the strategies of the AI have also paid off for us. Hamilton and Dragovic making another mistake. They went on for one more lap in those inters conditions on dry tyres and it means now Nico Hulkenberg comes out of nowhere to get P2 on the road with only five laps to go and Schumacher is going to climb up to P4 behind his teammate. What a recovery from Schumacher because he was down and out at the start of the Grand Prix. He got overtaken by Lando Norris at the start and was down in about you know P8 and he's recovered to P4 just behind his teammate but Dragovic and Hamilton losing positions because because they stayed out one lap too long on those dries in these wet conditions as the top 10 rounded out by Liam Lawson and Sonoda in P10 and P9 respectively. For us though, it's a quiet, calm drive to the end. 10.5 seconds ahead of Nico Hulkenberg. What a strategy call. And like I said, it all began at the starter park Ferme on Saturday. The gambles paid off. The higher wings have paid off and we win the Italian Grand Prix here in Monza. It was completely the right call. Completely the right call. This rain, no one could touch us in these conditions. But even then, it wasn't even much of a compromise to go higher wings at the start. We made it work. We made the tyre wear work on the mediums to stay out that long. And that gamble paid off as well. Here we are then, a thoroughly deserved win in Italy after another excellent Grand Prix. So, Anthony, what made the difference out there today? Well, they clearly have a car that comes alive in the kind of conditions we were dealing with today. It's a very balanced package in the wet, and what that means is that the drivers have confidence to attack, and having that confidence gets you on the power earlier, it lets you brake later, and can put you a long way up the road. 
Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be incredibly happy with what they were able to achieve out there today. It's a little bit frustrating not to have Hamilton up here on the podium with me because, to be fair, he helped me out a lot in that first part of the race with that teamwork where he was dragging me along with DRS. But, he, you know, him and Drogovic only have themselves to blame for losing positions because they went out too long on those drives. And Hulkenberg is the beneficiary. It's another, I think, his fourth podium this season for Hulkenberg so he's really making up for lost time on the lack of podiums in his career prior to this season in this game and universe of ours on F122 but it's the second win of the season for us and overall the fourth win of Arab Archer Racing in Season 7. So we've done very well indeed. And uh, like I said at the very start of the episode, though, we need to make the most of it. We had to because, you know, Imola is another great race for us, I think, in general for the My Team car. But then after that, we have some difficult races where others might just be a bit too quick for us. So we need to make the most of it. And we have, as we're now 15 points ahead of Lando Norris. It's very tight, though, in that chasing pack with Schumacher now back up into the fold in P3. Drug Hulkenberg is level on points with Drogovic there. So Hulkenberg is legitimately maybe in the title fight, you've got to say, to be honest, with Leclerc hanging on and Hamilton trying to maybe drag himself into it after such a poor start to the season. We go top of the Constructors' Championship, but Vettel Rensport annoyingly remain consistent and always ever present there with our old friend, good pal Sebastian Vettel at the helm as team principal. Has climb up to third place. They've had a resurgence. Williams and Audi, not so much. They need to still buck up and do better, especially Audi having brought in Sonoda just to do that. But to be fair, Sonoda did score some good points today and they were a bit slower in the wet. So I think that was just never going to work out for them. But there might be other races where once again, Lando Norris is flying at the top. So this advantage we've got, it's good right now, but it's a cushion we're going to need later to maybe try and limit any kind of damage. But that has been a fantastic return to this career mode for us at Monza with the win. A valiant gamble and effort to win it by 10.5 seconds guys if you have enjoyed this episode hit that like button let me know what you thought in the comments below if you're around here then do get subscribed for weekly formula on content and i'll see you guys next time goodbye